Hi everyone, so after many videos in which I talk about Formula 1, I thought it would be good to do a video on Indy cars as well, because this weekend it's the Indy 500. And one of the big changes this year for Indy cars is the addition of the aero screen. So this is an area where Indy cars went a quite different direction compared to Formula 1. Uh, in Formula 1 they went with the halo, uh, which is just the structural uh, protection, um, but there's yeah without the screen. So um, the aero screen that's used in IndyCar looks a bit like the Halo, but then just with the addition of uh, the screen, which uh, helps deflect uh, small uh, objects as well. Um, so obviously this will lead to improved safety for the drivers. There's much more head protection, um, but uh, as yeah, as my website is racecarsetup.com, uh, it would be interesting to look at the vehicle dynamic effects of such a device. Oh, and and now you're about to see why I film outside <laughs> because uh, yeah, my two little daughters they make some noise and <laughs> Dad, Dad is trying to make a video. Okay. <laughs> okay. Shh. All right. Okay. So, um, what are the effects of the aero screen? Oh, please don't shake the table. <gasps> um, so first of all, hey, don't don't do that. So the weight distribution is shifted forwards. Um, so there's more load on the front tires. The center of gravity is also moved higher, so there will be more load transfer in cornering, braking, and accelerating. Um, so here in the 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 blue dot is supposed to represent um where the old center of gravity was and by installing this massive aero screen which weighs about 30 kilos uh, or 60 pounds um <laughs> that is trying to make me okay um the center of gravity shifts forward and upwards um so the braking will be worse cornering will be worse and there will be more drive so overall the cars will be a little bit should be a little bit uh, slower than before the acceleration is probably hardly affected um, because although the weight shifts forward um, weight is added over the front the front axle uh, not much is so the the weight over the rear axle uh, is still the same um, so although the weight shifts forward the entire the total weight has increased um, Daddy is trying to make a video. Um, and the 30 kilos or so doesn't really increase the total uh, mass of the weight all of, of the car all that much. So um, if we look at the increased load transfer due to hi higher center of gravity. So uh, load transfer is equal to, well, it's a force. So it's uh, mass times acceleration. But then um, multiplied by the center of gravity height divided by the distance between the two sides so in cornering that's the track width and in braking and uh, accelerating that's um, the distance is the uh, wheelbase so uh, when a vehicle corners there's load transfer from the inside wheel to the outside wheel due to inertial force um, and the torque which is generated uh, over the center of gravity height and this multiplied by this force has to be counteracted by the load transfer multiplied by the track width. So you uh, end up with increased vertical load on the outside wheel and um, you will get some additional lateral tire force on the outside compared to the inside uh, but what you lose uh, you lose more on the inside than what you gain on the outside tire. Um, so I tried to calculate this. Uh, so there's a slight increase in the <laughs> there's a slight increase in the um, uh, in the mass of the vehicle. Um, so the the empty mass that I found via Google, you then need to add the mass of the driver, the the fuel. Uh, so there's a slightly increased uh, mass of the vehicle at race start. Um, and due to a yeah, roughly 6%, I'm sorry, 0.6% um, change in the, um, in the weight distribution, 
uh, the front axle has uh, more there's more weight over the front axle so then finally um, together with the increased uh, center of gravity height uh, and this is where I had to make an estimation I for this I don't have an exact number um, you can see that at, s at 4 G's uh, the load transfer um, there's yeah roughly 10% increased load transfer across the front tires with the aero screen uh, and then I just did some uh, sanity check okay so I switched to recording inside because I need the um, the power supply and uh, yeah the, um, the daughter has already appeared in the video anyway so it doesn't make a difference so as I was saying I was mainly making a sanity check to make just to make sure that the inside tire uh, tire load didn't become zero at which point it obviously lift off the road so that doesn't happen um, but yeah so the important uh, thing to remember is yeah uh, from this uh, change of central gravity location there will be roughly 10% increase in load transfer across the front tires with the assumptions that I've made of the original central gravity height of roughly um, 30 centimeters or 12 inches above the ground um, so what uh, what does that mean for the tire so um, in cornering tires will get squished um, and deformed from the cornering cornering force um, oh, okay. <laughs> uh, so that means the tires will wear out a lot more so uh, if you saw in Silverstone the the tire front uh, left tire uh, um, failures uh, those yeah from the tires having from from the tires being deformed uh, so so many times that at some point they just fell from the from the stress um, so that's one effect uh, there will be also there will also be more understeer due to the fact that the um, there's more um, more force uh, on the front axle in in cornering um, and there will be more uh, tire saturation effect across the front axle where the uh, total available uh, lateral tire force uh, will be a bit less than before due to the fact that there's more load transfer but uh, it's not as simple as that because the aero screen also uh, induces more drag so what we've said about um, more understeer and so on, uh, that applies for sure to the low speed corners, but then because the Indy 500 is very much a race at high, high speeds, um, drag becomes very important. And drag is, um, well, that goes up by the second power of velocity. Uh, and as power is, veloc is velocity times force, um, the power which is needed to uh, to overcome drag goes up by the third power um, and so that means the cars will enter uh, corners somewhat slower than before than without the aero screen which means the corner acceleration uh, which is square of the velocity divided by the radius of the turn well that will go down and the lateral acceleration that has the square relationship with the speed so in the end, uh, for Indy 500, it's actually not that easy to predict uh, without having access to more data to say whether um, the entry speed to, th to the corners will be reduced or not. Um, so I, I guess I, if, yeah, if, if I had a lot more time and didn't have to take care of the kids and organize birthday parties and things like this, then I could go and look at uh, corner entry speeds and so on and then work out uh, using the, the formulas over here um, whether the um, the front tires really end up doing more work or not but yeah as uh, time is limited um, it's it's kind of hard to say so it could be that there's uh, the front tire workload is increased and if the drag increase is uh, sufficiently dramatic then it could even be that the front tire workload will be even less than before um, also, uh, the aero screen obviously um, affects the airflow. So, unlike the halo uh, in Formula One, which doesn't have the 
uh, this plexiglass um, element, the um, and and therefore probably disturbs the error a lot less. The error screen um, is most likely to affect the airflow a lot more and is um, most probably uh, affecting the airflow over the rear wing, probably reducing it and therefore reducing the rear downfall. So this probably means that we'll be there will be more understeer in low speed corners, uh, but the balance is probably still okay at high speed. Um, so yeah, that, um, whether that's true or not, we will see from the comments from the drivers. And um, if we think about some other uh, ways to overcome uh, what I've um, mentioned about the low speed uh, understeer, so if the weight distribution is shifted forward due to the additional weight of the arrow screen, what could be done to kind of compensate is to increase the front tire uh, the front tire pressure by increasing the front tire pressure for sure at least in the linear region then the um, the uh, cornering stiffness is increased so for uh, so that way you will reduce the understeer uh, that's induced by the um, yeah forward uh, more forward weight distribution um, so that's it um, it will be interesting to see the effects the uh, arrow screen will also have on um, on say uh, pack racing and 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 the uh, and drafting because um, it might be that with more drag drafting becomes more important but then um, if the drafting mm, results in more understeer for the car behind then it'll be uh, yeah very difficult trade-off between well do you want to save fuel or do you want to save tires because if if you cause more understeer uh, in a vehicle which already has understeer uh, you might overheat the tires which it becomes a vicious circle more more heat more understeer more heat faster tire degradation um, so yeah it will be quite interesting to see what happens there so hope it was interesting until next time